Today we're sharing a presentation by our core team that goes over some helpful steps on how to develop on Pi. This includes a closer look at our core authentication and payments APIs, as well as how to clone and use our demo app, which is the fastest and simplest way to get started with our SDK. At Pi Network, accessibility is one of our core values. This means accessibility not only for pioneers, but also the growing Pi developer community, building real apps and utilities. We're proud to boast one of the most accessible Web3 integrated developer platforms in the world. With our simple integrations, developers don't need any prior blockchain or crypto experience to get started. During this phase of the enclosed mainnet, one of our main focuses is building utility on Pi Network, supporting developers to build awesome applications that address real life use cases and enrich the lives of pioneers. We hope you enjoy the video and feel free to share this video with your developer friends and colleagues who may also be interested. Um, our goal is to present um, an overview of the, the SDK and the APIs, which we call the Pi platform. And then we'll also give you an introduction to our demo application, which is a essentially a boilerplate uh, that could be used by you. If not, it can also be used to review for integration purposes, how to set um, your applications up. So to start uh, the Pi platform, it has two functionalities. Uh, the first functionality is connecting with a Pi user. And so the way uh, we do this is through an access token. And this access token corresponds then uh, to a user to, to be able to create a sign-in or to create a, a display uh, utilizing this, this user's information. And then the second uh, functionality is payment functionality. And so this is the ability uh, at the moment to request a user to pay you or to pay the application in Pi. And that request will sync directly to their wallet, uh, which we call the Pi wallet. Um, and you'll be able to uh, work them through the payment process in order to facilitate that. And for this first part, I'm going to go over what the user sees. And that way you get an understanding of how it works from a user perspective. And then Aurelian is going to walk you through um, the developer perspective uh, on the back end after that. Uh, so we have here our demo app. And so this is the, the boilerplate I was talking about. Um, and it is a pie bakery. Um, but on this demo app, uh, we have a few pies for sale and we also have a sign in sign out feature. And so the user sign in uh, is there, as I was talk mentioning earlier, it utilizes an access token. Um, and so by simply clicking sign in, um, this application will communicate with the Pi servers via the SDK that's been integrated into your application and will obtain the user information. In this case, it's the username. Uh, and so you can see when there is no one signed in, there's no user information. And then once the user signed in, you can see that username uh, there on the right. And uh, to note, the user for this application needs to be signed in uh, or authenticated um, in order to process payments. And that's because you need to have the user information in order to be able to process payments for that user. So now we'll begin the payment flow. And so I'm looking at uh, you know the, the, the application and I, and I want to buy an apple pie. Um, all I do as the user is I click order. And once I click order, then the payment flow um, changes. And so this screen pops up over top of your application. And this is the Pi Wallet payment flow. And what this is, this is controlled um, by the Pi platform, which allows uh, security for the user when interacting um, with the applications. And so this is just an initial loading screen. There's nothing for the user to do here. Um, everything's being handled on the back end, uh, which will be talked about in just a few moments. Uh, once the payment is, is built and ready, then the user is displayed this screen. This is just a confirmation screen where the user can see all of the information that um, will go into to the order or into the transaction. They can see here, 
Okay, I clicked on buy an apple pie or order an apple pie. That was three test pie. So I can confirm that that is right. And I've got that uh, my address is here as well. And I can see I'm ordering an apple pie. So I say, great, I hit uh, pay with test pie. And now it brings me to the confirmation screen. And this is where blockchain comes into, into play. So on a blockchain, you have to have um, what's called the secret key or the passphrase in order to be able to um, approve a transaction. And so we need to collect that passphrase from the user. In, our, in the case of Pi, that's a 24 word um, string that is used to confirm the, the wallet address, which is the, the user saying, I agree to this transaction. Here is my passphrase to confirm my agreement. And this is a cryptographically secure and verifiable method in order to send transactions on the blockchain. Um, and it is from a brute force standpoint, extremely difficult to guess uh, if not impossible to guess these passphrases. Um, and also at the same time, in order to protect this passphrase, because if it were to be collected by the developer, the developer could then process payments on behalf of the user without their consent. And so to protect that, um, this payment flow is a pop-up. As I was mentioning earlier, this uh, payment flow is, is over top of your application. And so everything that, that takes place in this payment flow uh, is inaccessible to your application, but it's okay. And so I look at this, I put in my passphrase. Uh, the user also has biometric ID uh, options as well within the, the Pi wallet. So that's the image on the left. Um, but I, I put my passphrase in, I pay, I click the pay button and it'll now bring me back to another loading screen, uh, which here, similar to the first uh, loading screen, this loading screen is more actions being completed on the back end. Uh, those actions are being completed by the Pi servers and by you, the developer. Um, and once those actions are completed, then you'll see the, the payment result screen that's on the right. Uh, this can. This has all of the uh, information uh, for the transaction uh, there. So you can see I paid the three test pie for the apple pie. Uh, it went to the pie bakery, uh, which is our platform demo, and then the wallet address that it was sent to. Uh, so at this point, I, the user, can click close and the payment uh, from a user standpoint has been completed. And so now I'll turn it over to Aurelian to talk about the payment flow from a developer standpoint. Yep, thanks for going through these. So um, the idea of the next few items that we're going to cover is going to be to kind of dive into what's going on when the UI shows what uh, Christian was showing and understand how that is built from the developer standpoint. So um, I guess uh, one of the first things to say is that this is a design that um, is, uh, the, 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 the reason this design exists is in order to get all parties, all party picture of what's going on to the user, the app backend and the app's database uh, contain the right information. So for example, the user, uh, the information that user X uh, has ordered product Y and that they have paid for it. And then the Pi platform is kind of overseeing that entire process. Even though the blockchain is decentralized, there is a little bit of a centralized layer, which is also enabling the Pi platform to show some nice UI to the user, enabling them to under to remember why they paid for it and not just see a, a transaction in their wallet and they don't know where it went. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to prevent here is if there's a bug somewhere, uh, either on the Pi side or on the app side, we're trying to prevent users from double paying for the same thing. So we're trying to get everyone to confirm that they are aware of what's going on before the user makes the transaction and after the user has made the transaction. 
so that we never ever end up in a state where the user has paid for something but nobody's aware of it and now if they want whatever they're paying for they have to pay again and they ended up double paying this is uh, one of the challenges with blockchain and the way we're solving it is with quote unquote simple tools uh, which are just javascript function calls and api calls http api calls so no blockchain tech involved at this point um, I think we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, so